Hi everyone, this tutorial is a follow-up to my previous video where I showed you how to quickly integrate AI engines into a Vivado design with uh, with like minimal deviation from the, the standard Vivado flow that you might be already comfortable with. So in this short tutorial, I'll, I'll uh, start from the same design that we left off in that previous video and then I'll demonstrate how to mod modify that original Vivado project uh, and go through the, the rest of the flow. So if you remember from that previous video, I suggested that the traditional Vivado flow is really a one-step process for generating a bitstream. Uh, you, you basically just press the big generate bitstream button in Vivado and out, and that's, that's what it runs through place synthesis and place and route and gives you a final bitstream. I also said that the, the Vitus flow that we're now using turns that single step process into a two step process where rather than pressing the generate bitstream button in Vivado, we first we hit the export platform button and then we uh, from there we switch over to Vitus uh, to produce that final bitstream or in versal terms, it's a PDI, it's more than just a bitstream. So uh, with, with that Vitus two step process, uh, there's there's this handoff file called an XSA, and that file gets written to disk by Vivado and then consumed by Vitus. So, uh, as, as you can imagine, the, if that file or any of its dependencies go stale, uh, if you continue the rest of the flow, um, it the the tool may be reusing stale cached data. So the key concept in this video is is that that XSA file and all of its dependencies need to be updated when you make any change to the Vivado project. And that's what I'm going to be demonstrating in this video right now. So as you can see here, I've got the Vivado project opened in the state that we left it in previously. And I'm just going to make a change to this Vivado design uh, in a way that is easy to identify that we've successfully updated everything once we load it into hardware and actually execute it on the target. Okay, so if you remember previously, we basically have a uh, two DDS compilers, each generating a sine wave of a different frequency. We're adding those together, and then later on, Vitus attaches this Axie stream to the AI engine PLIO block. AI engine does a fur filter on them, and uh, we look at the output results results as well as both of the input sine waves. So in this case, I'm basically just going to delete one of these input sine waves and replace it with a constant, you know, a DC offset that we're adding to one sine wave. So it'll be very obvious that we've we've made a made a change when we look at the data in the ILA. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to add in a constant here. So if you remember, we had 16 bit data. Now for the tvalid signal handling, I'm going to simply use the tvalid output from the DDS compiler to drive the second channel as well, um, just so that we uh, any synchronization issues are, are dealt with here. Um, so one one Vivado IP integrator tip here is that anytime, so, so the original connection I had here was an interface connection from one Axie stream to another which bundles all the underlying actual signals together and represents them as a single white bus wire in the in the canvas here. But if I over I can override the, that connection by manually dropping down this interface and making individual wire connections. But if I do that, uh, it, the, whatever signals I override are no longer considered part of the, the actual interface connection. So in other words, this T-valid signal, I've overridden it, I've disconnected it from this bus, and now I've connected it to channel two. Well, I also still want it to actually be going to channel one in this case. So I'm gonna connect it also manually to that interface. So for the same reason, um, we're, we're monitoring this second channel's Axie stream interface with this ILA. So 
I because I've overridden the T data signal, this ILA is no longer monitoring it. So I want to also connect the T data signal here. Okay, so that's it for the changes. I'm simply going to save the block design and I'm going to generate the block design just as before. And once the platform or once the block design has been generated, we're going to switch over to this platform setup tab and we're going to re-export the platform. So we're going to click through this again, making sure we're selecting pre-synthesis. And this is going to output the XSA file to the same location as before. So it's going to note that it's going to override that that XSA file that already exists from the first time we iterated through this design, which is exactly what we wanted to do. So I'm going to say yes, finish. So I'll note here that this platform setup tab is dynamic based on any changes you make in the block design. Uh, and in our case, since we only made purely logic, basically wiring uh, changes, nothing on this, uh, nothing on the Vitus uh, or on the, the, the platform interface had changed at all. Uh, so we didn't have to do anything. But in theory, if you made a change to the design that, you know, you added Axie interconnects or you changed the memory map or clocks and resets, any of that stuff, that could be uh, reflected as, uh, or I should say, it could cause uh, new things to be added to this page or things to be deleted or things that you might have to actually change. So just be aware of that depending on the type of change you're making, you might have to go in here and make some changes. Okay, so now that the XSA file has been exported, we want to switch over to our Vitus project. So if you remember, we've got our hardware platform and our, our system project that contains our hardware link and our AI engine project. So in this case, you know, sort of the bottom layer here is the that that platform and this uh, this this design one wrapper platform project contains you know boot boot code and other things that are based on that XSA file so since that XSA file updated we need to go and update this so to do that I right click it in the Explorer window highlight the project and then right click it and then say update hardware specification and that's going to open a window here that is going to allow me to point to that XSA file that we just exported here. Say OK. And once it reads in that XSA file, we get a window saying it's successfully updated here. Say OK. And now you'll note that our platform project has gone out of date. So what we want to do here is to rebuild this project, which should, should, which will take a, a minute or two to recompile and, and update any, any dependent libraries there. And that's already complete. So now at this point, our, uh, our, our hardware linked project and our packaged project are out of date. So the next thing, in our case, we're not making any changes to the AI engine project at all. So we really don't need to recompile this, but we do have to rerun the hardware link stage, which as you remember, runs the Vitus linker. That's where place and route actually gets run based on the platform and wiring in any accelerators. So since the platform Vivado project changed, we need to rerun this. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to choose the hardware target, say, uh, sorry, I'm going to clean it. And I will build. And I can see it's rerunning that Vitus link stage. Okay, now the Vitus link stage is complete. The next step is to update the package step here. So that's this final hardware project for the system here. Build this. Sorry, clean and build. It will rerun the V++ package command and regenerate our boot.bin.
And now the Vitus Packager is complete, so we have a boot.bin. Now we can switch to our Rivato project, open our hardware manager again, program the device, point to my new boot.bin that was updated just a minute ago. run my trigger and then open up both of the ILA probes here. We can see we still have this uh, sine wave on the first channel and then the second channel is constant 4096 as we as we programmed. So all of our changes were successfully applied. We were able to go through the the flow starting from Vivado making our change to the block design or could have been any RTL changes we needed to make outside of the block design or constraints or whatever. I showed how to then export, re-export the platform that'll override that XSA file. And then we switched to Vitus and uh, updated all those dependency, dependent projects that uh, ultimately relied on that XSA file or, or the base platform. So, Go ahead and use this to, to make any changes to your, your platform project. That's it for today. Thank you.